Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. This is the site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed, and his victor claimed the throne. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England, and his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown, so he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the Channel to England. The weather cleared. He seized his chance. Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. On October 14, 1066, William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. William's Norman army made the first charge, launching a direct assault on the shield wall. Though William's army fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. He aimed to lure the Anglo-Saxons into a false sense of victory, causing them to break formation. William's feigned retreat was working. The Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. With Harold's men no longer in shield wall formation, William could pick them off as they charged.
the Anglo-Saxons had deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders. But William had an answer. His sharp-eyed archers. arms reinforced William's army. Saxon archers joined the fray, and the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. But first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. Additional Norman archers joined the battle. With the threat of spearmen cleared from the field, William's cavalry was free to charge at the Anglo-Saxon archers. Saxon army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized and their numbers were dwindling. Now the only thing standing between William and victory was King Harold himself. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives to save his. Cavalrymen took to the field. The Anglo Saxon King Harold had fallen. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. <laughs> Leaderless and defeated, the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king, but William's quest to rule England was just beginning.
Battle of Hastings, the death of one man changed the course of history. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold was killed here, on England's south coast. His army defeated by William of Normandy. Anglo-Saxon rule was over forever. At Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day 1066, William was crowned the first Norman King of England. Now he had to secure power across the country. He began by stamping his mark on the landscape, building cathedrals and castles at strategic locations. Nothing like them had been seen in England before. They reminded the Anglo-Saxon population exactly who was in charge. But not all were content with living under Norman rule. Anglo-Saxon revolts broke out across the country. King William acted quickly to crush these rebellions. But there was one region where dissent was spiraling out of control. The north of England. In 1069, a group of lords from Northumbria formed an alliance with Viking invaders. Together, they approached Norman-held York, a large city with an important cathedral, still protected by ancient Roman walls. But the walls couldn't save York. The city and the castle fell to the rebels. William's new kingdom was under threat. He had to get the city back under Norman control. William had no choice but to order his men north. But as the Norman forces set off on their long march towards York, how much resistance from the rebels would they encounter? William the Conqueror marched north with his army of Normans determined to take back the rebel-held city of York. But in his path stood rebel towns that harbored William's northern enemies. He would take the towns back by force. The Normans captured the town of Middlethorpe, establishing their presence in the north. With reinforcements to his army soon arriving, William would need more resources to supply them.
Okay. Parats. Move on. Edifico. Masono. Obéir, cette vertu. Escoltez, colonel. Labour. Mais. Édifico. Explorer. The Norman army was now well supplied by a town, but it would take a sustained effort to keep the army at full strength. Another rebel town, Fulford, stood in defiance to William's rule.
With the Fulford Rebels eliminated, William was one step closer to York. Knowing he would face strong resistance in the city, William prepared to bolster his cavalry. Ah, finit. Hmm, finit. Pero... Varo. Escolte. Laburo. Cabo. Quad. Movens. Comprens. Sala. Vado. Masul. Escolto. Escolte. Perigol. The Normans discovered an enemy outpost on the water. It belonged to an ally of the northern rebels, the Danes. The Danish King Svein II had sent his army to harass William's forces and prevent him from taking back the north. William had a choice. Bypass the encampment or destroy it. Having left the Dane threat unchecked, the Normans now faced a savage raid from the rebels' fearsome ally. army held back the Danes' attack, but they threatened to return unless William paid them in gold.
Vado. Ubi vado. Io ma sono la cosa. Parate per venire. Cosa sarà ma sono? Ascolta bene. bene. Vado a lavorare. William's reinforcements from the south had arrived, adding vital numbers to his Norman army. William paid off the Danes and was rid of their attacks. William's ultimate goal was within his grasp. All that remained was to enter York and destroy its keep. Parades for the Polonaise. Parades at France. Allez. Vous êtes la maçonnata. Parades pour venir. Et chez les mains de Mantes. Si, caro. Vous êtes la maçonnata.
The Norman army poured into York and began sacking the town as they bore down on the keep. Labour. Ah, Félicet Léat. Bonne labour. Si son mess. Bonne labour. Ah, Félicet Léat. Et 
Bond, je commande. Avant. fell to the Norman army, and York was secured. The Northern Rebellion was over, and William the Conqueror was uncontested as King of England. William the Conqueror had recaptured York from the rebels. Now he wanted to teach them a lesson for defying him. He began a brutal campaign of destruction to crush any further resistance, known as the harrying of the North. Villages and crops were destroyed. It is said a hundred thousand people were killed. With ruthless efficiency, William the Conqueror had secured obedience in his new kingdom. But it wasn't to last. It would be thrown into chaos by his own children. 